Hey everyone, I'm super, super excited today to present our next guest for Founder Stories. Today's guest is a very dear friend and a very, very special guest coming on the podcast. She is a young founder, a very young founder, and has founded a phenomenal, phenomenal company all the way from all the way in Tel Aviv. I'm super excited to have May with us today in order to share her story, her journey, her experience, her strength, her hope that we are able to implement it into our own lives. So Mai, thank you so much for joining us. Yay, Ryan, thank you for inviting me to join here. So excited. It's an absolute pleasure. Mai, from the day, first time I met you, I knew right away, first of all, that you're going places, right? That V is going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal startup, but not only V, but you yourself are going to be some type of global ambassador to girls and women and to all the young people all around the world. And there's no doubt in my mind that's going to happen very, very soon, right? But why don't we like go all the way back to the beginning? You know, where's my from? What's her upbringing like? You know, what shaped her from a young from a young girl that wanted to that made her have this massive, massive ambition in order to conquer the world? You know, and that's let's start all the way from there. Wow, Ephraim, now I'm blushing. <laughs> uh, so actually, my story is not the typical story of like growing up in Tel Aviv, had a CEO, dad, or whatever. I actually grew up in a small town in southern Israel called Dimona. I don't know if you even know it. Um, and I grew up with amazing parents and uh, two little, like one brother, one sister. I'm, uh, I'm the oldest, the oldest uh, sister. And actually, it's really funny because when you will ask every person from my family, they will say she was a CEO like from age three. <laughs> I, <laughs> I used to take all the other siblings, making them sit and taking my orders. You <laughs> need to do this. You need to do that. I was like four, like really, really, really young, even younger than now. I'm doing the same thing now, but with older people. <laughs> Um, and that was really funny because I made everyone to cut flowers and bring me food and doing everything that I needed to do to like clean my room and stuff. Um, and then I was like, yeah, I did it. That, that was me. And, and it, I will t- like used to take all the credit, which is so funny. So if you will ask my partner, Gil, which is also my mom's brother, um, you'll well, actually, if you will ask anyone, they will say she was a CEO since she was three. Uh, But the thing is, when you ask me, um, when you ask me where it came from, like the drive and everything and where it started, I think it's, it's, it was from my environment, really warm environment. My family was really warm. I actually grew up really close to my grandfather and grandmother. Um, And when I was 13, I opened my first business uh, called Pineapple. It was actually a store for uh, for swimwear, mm-hmm. really, like I saw that there was a small need, no way to find swimwear. Everything was eBay, thirty days delivery, and I said, okay, let's try. So I had two best friends that learned um, fashion in school. Right. It was like seventh grade, and I said, okay, I'll order. You'll do like all the like correct things, bring more flowers and design. And then we will sell it like 10 times more. Um, and it worked with like 10K, 20K a month. Wow. It was literally ir- illegal because right. we had nothing, like no business written or something. And after a couple of months, I sold it and we donated all the funds uh, back to charities. And we, we were really proud. Oh my God, it really worked. And when I, when pineapple, uh, when I gave it, like I sold it to um, my best friend's mother. So I joined the robotics team in my school. Uh, It's a first robotics competition. I don't know if you know it. It's a huge organization all around the world that wants competitions in schools. And I, once I got to the team, it took me two seconds to understand that I don't care (laughs) about robotics or mechanics or programming, no, (laughs) this is not me. But the other side of things, the entrepreneurship side, social impact side uh, was really attracting. And same time, I know, I believe you had a really good research. 
I donated my entire hair, literally like everything mm -hmm. um, to cancer, like to kids with cancer, girls. Uh, it was because my best friend was uh, cancer sick. Mm -hmm. She had a really, really bad disease. Actually, she died two months after, uh, which was really, really suck. Uh, but it was the first time that I understood how amazing it is to do something back right. um, to the community or to people when you're like written, you don't gain anything right. um, to your bank account. But the feeling is they're really un, uh, unexpressible. And, and that's it. Once I joined the team, I got to, to lead and manage all of the social impact programs of my team. And uh, from there to there, I got to manage uh, over 14 million volunteers from all around the world, from teams, from corporates, people, projects. We submitted a law submission in the Israeli Knesset. I got to be selected uh, to be the, the youngest Google mentor in Mind the Gap programs in Israel in the history. Mm -hmm. And it was literally lots of amazing things to do. And I had a very big challenge because I didn't know English. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm from a small town, no English, no technology. My mom works in a hotel. My dad works in a factory in the Dead Sea. High tech was like not connected to me in any way. I mean, no way. <laughs> so this is how I started and how I grew up. And from this really weird and not um let's say the way you hear probably in much of your podcasts so it's wow. not a regular one but it's a really interesting one wow I, incredible absolutely incredible like so many things I'm, I'm i'm hearing you know a natural girl boss from a very young age you know a very bossy sister um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no but a, a natural tendency towards leadership at the same time, you know, as you had the natural tendency towards leadership, you also had that empathy where, you know, for example, making money as a 13 year old, I remember making money as a 13 year old. And the last thing I did was donated all my money to charity. I think I bought the latest Game Boy or something it was like that. But to take, you know, you're mentioning $20,000 a month in profit, whatever it was, and then you're selling the company um, to, to your mom, to your friend's mom. I'm sure you sold it for a nice penny and then donating the money to charity at 13, that's a very big thing. You know, yeah. you can get here to your friend. You know, we all know here is part of somebody here, especially, you know, it's a girl, it's a beautiful type of thing. And so it's part of you. And to take that, to do that is something from within you. And then, you know, everything else, you know, having that natural tendency. Yes, he wanted to be the leader, the boss, and, you know, and everything like that. But at the same time, it was all about having empathy and making, you know, helping more people, right? Which is creating organizations. And just incredible to hear that story over there. You know, it's like, I mean, I have obviously so many questions, but I'll dive right into it, you know, specifically having empathy at such a young age, right? Yeah. You know, you're 21 years old now. You know, you're the leader of, of, of an incredible organization, an incredible company. And we'll get into the fact of where the idea came from, how you started, and everything like that. But I want to go into to empathy. You know, you obviously to have empathy like that, for especially for people that are working, you know, that are much older than you, probably double their age, they could pre probably be your grandfather, your father, and your great-great-grandfather, something like that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> how do you relate from such a young age, you know, your Generation Z, how do you relate them? How do you express that empathy? How do you have that, you know? Actually, I, I really believe it's in my blood. Um, I got everything from my family and I really believe it's in my blood. I, I have a really, a really, really big problem or challenge to fake things. I do not know how to do it. Um, so I really believe that the empathy is something that once you get uh, you're educated to be and you see in your parents my mother and father like my parents are donating so much like my dad volunteers and uh, mada which is a uh, like red cross in israel and uh again david adom and my mom like donates clothes and my grandfather and grandmother always did it um it was like usual and house was always open to people it's not I don't know something else. No. Um, I didn't know also as a, as a young girl. And it was obvious to me. Once I, I came to my mom, mom, I'm taking my entire hair out. She's like, you're crazy. But when I, once I did it, she said, wow, 
I mean, I, I knew you're gonna do it. Um, once you told me, it's same thing with the donation. I mean, what, once I came and said, I'm donating all the, all the money to, uh, to a charity, actually it was Agudá Le Milchama Basardán. It was also a cancer, um, like supporting cancer, um, yeah, NGO. So once I, I told it to her, she was like, we knew it's not, we knew you're gonna do something like, it's not because it's like, you're the most important girl in the world, because we knew that that, that was something that was what you looked at, what you saw, what you learned from a very young age. Right. So then how important is having empathy in your organization, your company, and as, as a leader and to, to others? It's super, super important though. I really see so many um, managers who are not leaders, not because they're giving, they're not giving their employees a day off or a vacation because they don't have the basic empathy of being a leader. You're not just a boss. You're the leader of this person. Right. The, my employees, actually my team is a different story, but half of, of my team, we're 20 employees now. Half of my team are with us before we even had money in the bank, even before the first round for half a year, ran with, not because they, they, they thought it's gonna be a multi-billion dollar company. Now they believe it because they see things happen, but then they believed in my, they believed in Gil and in Avi, uh, my co-founders, because they saw the empathy, they saw the vision. And once, I really believe that once the employers are not, they will believe that they're not just employers that are saying, okay, you can take a day off. Okay, let's see your KPIs, but actually looking at the person in front of them. I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with my entire team once couple of weeks, not because I need to, because I really do care. They are my face, the, the, the face of my company. They are my ambassadors and their community and their children's school or whatever. And I believe it's so basic. And once employers will say, okay, I give them a very good salary. I do happy hours and everything, but do I have the basic empathy, not just to my employees, to my customers, to my uh, shareholders, to my community, to my kids, to whatever. It's really gonna change to the people I meet daily on my way to work uh this I, I believe this agenda really changes the way you look at things sure. yeah and just to see the passion how much you talk about it how it's, you know, it's, amazing. <laughs> like, it's leading with empathy you know leading with sort of like people first at the end of the day we're all human beings and we all want the same thing you know, which essentially boils down to, you know, yeah. however you want to look at it from, uh, you know, so many different hierarchies in different ways. But at the end of the day, everyone yeah. wants just love and connection. I want to be, you know, that's essentially what everyone, if we want to strip away all the, you know, the obstacles, the mind, the stories we tell ourselves and everything else. At the end of the day, all people want is just love and connection, right? And, you know, able to give that is leading through empathy. And one of the things you mentioned a lot of saying, and it specifically goes back to giving, you know, giving and charity, everything like that. People, yeah. charity is the most beautiful, but the most selfish thing possible. Because when you're giving to someone else, like you mentioned before, you are benefiting so much more how you yourself feel good. Right? It could be monetary, financially, it could be through giving time, it could be through multiple different types of things. But you benefit so much more, which essentially you know, goes to your company, what your company is all about giving all about helping people give, all about making them feel good, all about helping them make an impact in this world, which, you know, like where does this, this idea for your phenomenal company come from? So actually, as I told you before, when I was in FIRST and uh, RoboActive, the team in uh, Dimona, we supported so many projects around the world. We opened teams in Brazil and in Cyprus and in the US and in Israel and really like all across the world. And we collaborated with lots of them. And we actually collaborated with uh, huge corporates like Guinness World Records and Google and NASA and really crazy, crazy, crazy organizations. And it was really hard for me to see that we have tens of millions of people around the world that are not connected in any way. Mm -hmm. That was really hard to me. And once 
I did the basic things of asking the HRs who participated or what was their feedback? And she said, I don't know. I manage everything on my notebook. Or once, like when I, I spoke with the volunteers themselves, okay, how we went. It was fine, but um, we couldn't see actually who else participated. And I was like, oh my God, that's so basic. Mm-hmm. I, can, uh, I can schedule my flight to New York till the meal, like the last thing I do from here, but I cannot find a way to volunteer or to do good. It's so basic. I mean, I can guess, even without knowing, that you do not have any volunteering app on your phone. No, correct. And you have ways for driving and, um, and you have Uber and you have all of those category leaders in so many fields, but you do not have even one for doing good. And when I saw that in all of those people all across the world, 34 countries, I told you like over 40 million volunteers, I said, okay, this needs a disruption. Right. And when I saw all of those, this ecosystem, the nonprofits from one side, corporates from other side, and the people in the middle of everything want to do good, but they don't know how, I said, okay, I'm going to build them a good way to know. And this is how I started to be. Actually, I was in, the, in my army service. I was a commander in, um, in an intelligent unit. Uh, it's really classified, so I cannot elaborate a lot about my army service, but it was really interesting. And I remember this day, I was in my bed, I was like the upper bed in the room. And I was thinking, okay, maybe it's time for me to start rolling things because I knew I want to do it. And I knew I have lots of experience in this field, like five years of managing this in first. So maybe it's time to, to get things started. And my first phone call was to Gil, uh, which is also uh, my co-founder, amazing Gilly. I called him. I told him, hi, Gilly, how are you? I have an idea. It's really disruptive because I want to change the way everyone in the world are doing good. Not just individuals, but communities and corporates and nonprofits. I want to make this entire ecosystem to be on my platform. And he said, okay, (laughs) do you have a a CTO? And I said, no. And he said, okay, so now you have. And we took ourselves search from our third, uh, for our third co-founder, Avi. Uh, I didn't know him before. I made sure that everyone know that I'm looking for my third co-founder. And my history teacher in school connected me to Avi. Mm. And it was the exact same conversation. I shared my vision with him. And he said, do you have a COO, CFO? I can help in those fields. No, I don't. And I don't have any uh, experience as I told you my only business was illegal when I was 13 and he said uh, okay so I'm in and then we built a team of developers UX UI designers and it seems really easy because I speak that uh, yeah we did it no it took so many times it was like months over months hiring people okay they don't fit and like then like replacing them and trying to see how I'm gonna keep people with me when I, I don't have money. I need them to work on their spare time and everything is rolling. And they're like, my, I have a, a job offer. What I'm gonna do? And I was like, I don't know what I want you to do. <laughs> it's my first time doing this. Somehow with believing in the vision, it worked and we built the team. And then this is how we started. Wow, incredible. And I specifically love the fact that, you know, a lot of times, you know, as you get older, um, you know, I'm not old, but I'm sure older people can relate, um, and especially even smarter people could, is that our own self gets in the way, right? Where they always say innocence and stupidity is bliss, right? And the evenness is even better. You know, the, and it's a lot of times we think like, oh, I'm going to change the rules. And when we're older, we get all these things that I can't change my rules. They can't, they can't make an global impact. I'm not able to start a company, all different types of rejections and different types of stories we tell ourselves. Yeah. At such a young age to have, first of all, like, you know, the naiveness to drive you, like, first of all, not knowing how to, you know, never before start form the company. 
um, never recruited or led a team, obviously, besides, you know, you other you're in the first and in your services, but in, in actual in, in forming a company, leading a company and guiding it, you know, he was like 19 years old, you know, sitting on, the, on top of your bunk bed thinking, you know what, I'm going to make a company like, you know, because why not? It's probably the easiest thing to do after the army service because I have nothing <laughs> else to do, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, sure. No, no, it's not. So, I travel like two hours a day from Dimona to my base. Like two hours, one direction, two hours back, just to be on top of things and to pitch to investors. I, I in the in the army service, you have your week, and then you're going home on weekends or by the end of the day or after two weeks, three weeks. And I went home every weekend, so I used to schedule my investors meeting on Friday nice. uh, because that was the only day I was at home. And that was so funny because I was like coming with uh, my uniform, like my army uniform. So like take it out. And I was like, like the, the bar people and like the, um, the people in the restaurant. Hi, can you, can I put it here? I was like coming out on heels, like I'm the best CEO in the world. And they didn't know that I have my army uniform right behind me. <laughs> so um, that was really challenging. But looking back at that time, really worth every second. Even it was really embarrassing. Like it was like, why she came in like this, went out like this every time, same restaurant. <laughs> so <laughs> then what were like some of the complicated, not complication, but challenges when people started finding out, especially investors, you know, you raised to date, to according to my knowledge, you know, a million dollars for V, you know, and which actually is it's two and a half. <laughs> sorry, two and a half million dollars, right? Yeah. At 21, at 20 years old, you raised two and a half million dollars. Um, which is an incredible, incredible story itself. And the fact and shows so many things and shows, first of all, investors belief in V, but not only investors belief in V, but investors belief in you, right? So you obviously have that something that they believe in your passion. They believe in the fact they're able to make a global impact. They, they believe in the fact they're able to take this company to whole new heights. But what, as a young founder, I mean, there's so many challenges, which we'll get into as a young founder, how you, you know, your leadership style and how you're learning how to do leadership, but it was specifically is talk about the money part of raising that month, $2.1 million at 20 years old. What were the challenges around specifically, you know, with your age? Actually, it's a great question because I believe that this question connects to all types of challenges. It's the same challenge raising the 1 million first round. And actually this one was easier because, you know, I am already known and they know my company and they reach out to us. So it was easier but the first one round is the one I want to talk about here because it really connects the same challenge by hiring people that are 40 years old when you're 21 or talking with or convincing other entrepreneurs that they need to be your mentors or whatever same challenge and when you take the age and you come to a meeting and you said hi my name is Mai I'm 21 this is my company but, and, and, and I'm taking this to a different thing, but what happens when you come to a meeting said, hi, I'm Mai, this is my company and I'm 21. Mm -hmm. So the picture changes because first thing, when you say it at the beginning of your, like the beginning of your story, it already says, why you give it such a big place in your pitch? It's your fourth word. But if you say, this is me, this is my company, and I'm 21, actually, and they're like, okay, wow, you did all of this while you're 21. It's not, you're 21 and you're doing all of this. And this is how you take the age and you're giving it a small place, just the way if you're, for example, 40, you're not going to say, hi, my name is Ephraim, I'm 40, and I have a startup. Oh, don't, don't put some age on me. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I, I know you're not. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm taking this to a, a, another conversation. Just the way you're not going to say it on a bigger age. Uh, young entrepreneurs are giving the age a bigger place everywhere in their pitch and their self-confidence. And I'm, I'm t I totally understand why, though. It's, it's logic. Look at the global ecosystem. You don't you don't see uh, 90, 20 year old founders raising one million dollars and three months on an impact startup. It's like all the <laughs> the um, um, stereotypes. It's one startup, of course, female, uh, blah blah blah, and everything that you can take also. 
But the main challenges from my perspective was people that didn't want to accept this mm-hmm. and were the world of all of those people. There's like, what the fuck? Do you live in a movie? You know, you think you know everything? Go learn, go, go to university and then go back to us. I know those people. My father is same thing. My father said, I, I don't think this is going to work. I don't believe in this. You will always have all of those big rocks that are there to hide your potential, to hide your vision. And the most important thing that really helped me, because at the beginning, everything, every time I got a no, I was devastated. What I'm going to do? Everyone are saying no. I, got, I met like 20, 30 investors. Everyone was like, no. Maybe I don't have a clue. But I met, uh, I remember this meeting really, really, uh, really uh, remember this one. I met Yoav. He uh, was a, a mentor of mine at the beginning of V. And I, I told him, I don't know what to do. I mean, everyone are saying no. And he said, do you know why? And I said, what do you mean? Do you ask them why you said no? I said, no. I said, okay, go back to all of those 30 with an email. Can you elaborate why? And once I did, I got to learn so much and I improved my pitch and my deck and my product and my market uh, perspective and everything. And all of those no's was, they, they were a gold mine, I mean, that was amazing. Thank God for all those knows. This is how I got V to where she is now. And not just about, it's not correct only about um, investors and VCs. Also, if you want to hire someone and they said, no, you need to ask them why. Same thing about relationships, same thing about everything. Um, and this tip is the biggest one I give to entrepreneurs. Ask why not. It's a really important one. So I believe this thing really gave me um I uh, just like uh, getting back to the road and and one the I believe the biggest challenge since this round it really not connected to my age um when we uh we were really close to add the round we all we already have a round lead horizon and we're really close to the end and then my grandfather Gilly Gilly's father um Yoshua which I was really connected to as I told you he got a stroke mm. and it was in Gilly's house. So we like, we shut down everything. Okay, we're not gonna work. It's not gonna work. We're not gonna move like further. We're closing B, it's not gonna work. That was really, really, it took up off, like off our chairs. No, like no way to go. We're shutting down, we spoke to the team. We have a really big personal thing now. We can't move forward with the startup. And getting back from this one was really hard and challenging, but this story is really good too. I sat on my bed here in Tel Aviv and I I called my mom. I told her, mom, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. I don't have any money in my bank. I don't have money to pay my rent. And everything is so complicated. Gil is devastated. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna move forward with the, the company. I'm going coming back to Dimona. And she said, "My, just let's try one last week. I'm gonna. I'm gonna help somehow. Just let's try one last week." My mom really pushes me as much as she can. And I woke up the day after, and I saw my V team. A WhatsApp group with like 400 messages. The team, they worked the entire night on the product, marketing strategy, social media, whatever. And we were, it was actually before launch already. And I looked at, the, at this picture of, oh my God, they have like messages 5 a.m., 3 a.m. Those people are crazy. And I called Gilly and I told him, Gilly, we really need to get the fuck up. <laughs> There's no way. They really believe in us. This is why they did it and they do it. And then he said, okay, Ma, let's, let's go back to the road. And after one week, we closed the $1 million. Wow. Yeah. 
it, it, within me, it brings out so many emotions and I'm able to feel it. I mean, the whole story, like obviously you, 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 you know, your grandfather um, and then, you know, going through that challenges of what, like, you know, sitting on your bed and like, I'm sure you're crying to your mom, you know, tears are probably coming down, you know, talking about the fact that you don't have anything. Like, I don't have money. I can't pay my rent. I don't know. I'm going to pay my employees. I don't know if it's even worth doing this. You know, especially you're you know, at a young age, you know, having, you know, where life is still supposed to be so blissful and not experiencing all these types of challenges. Yeah. And like being able to overcome that and not just overcome it, but like thrive. It's yeah. just so inspiring. So inspiring. Yeah. I, I will take this as, um, as a moment to share one of my biggest beliefs. I believe that neither one of us we have our personal gas station my personal gas station is my team right. i understood it on this this morning when i saw those those messages i got my gas back and i get back to the road mm -hmm. and i believe each one of us we have our own gas station whether if it's your family your best friend your team your investors whatever once you figure out what's your gas station, it gives you confidence because I know I have my gas station just the way you know you when you have uh, like 13 kilometers in your car and it's like, okay, but I know I have my gas station right here. So for me, it's my team and I, it's, it's a tip that I give every time I, I do my lectures and it gives you like uh, silence and, and hope. Yeah. And we all, it's, everyone has that. It could be your gas station, it could be your family, it could be your support network, it could be your friend, but it's so important to have that gas station, whatever yeah. it is. Because you're always going to go through challenges in life. And it's another yeah. thing also, you know, such an yeah. episode like that is a reference for the rest of your life. Because, yeah. you know, if you keep in mind, like, you know, a time like that, where you thought, I'm never going to be able to pull through, you know, just life is just too difficult, too hard. The next time you go through a challenge, you have to think about the previous challenge you went through. Because if you think about the previous challenge you went through, where at a time when you thought, I'm never going to pull through, you realize what happened, you pulled through. Not only did you pull through, you thrived. So the next time you're going through a difficult challenge, you have to remember, it, put reference, I went through something similar beforehand. And what happened? And I, I came out alive. I came out okay. I didn't die. So when you yeah. go through a challenge now, you're able to pull reference and be like, I'm, I know I'm going to come out of it okay. Right now, is it difficult? Yes, 100%. Does it suck? Yes. Is it shitty? Yes. But you know what? I'm going to pull through through this because I know I went through something similar and previously, you know, mental health is such a big thing. And as a young person, you know, um, how do you keep your mental health at the forefront? You know, you're missing out. You're missing out on the life of a typical 21 year old, you know, everything from partying, the beaches, clubbing, you know, and everything else that comes together with the traveling the world and experiencing life. You're missing out on that. And, I, and maybe you're not, maybe you found the eco balance that most founders are looking for, how to party and how to build a company and everything like that. I don't know, but like <laughs> you, you were missing out. How difficult is it missing out? That's one thing, right? And you know, we'll get, and the second thing is will we focus on, on your mental health? Actually, uh, at the beginning, I was 100% V. And I saw that as V grows, my mental health, really goes down mm -hmm. and actually it wasn't me that diagnosed it it was my investor jacob he said my you raised extra extra 1.5 million dollars like today why aren't you happy i'm happy i'm just exhausted mm -hmm. and he said he asked me what when was the last time you went out with your friends i don't know he said, okay <laughs> We have a bigger problem here than $1.5 million. And I'm seeing a, a psychologist, with it, which is really important. I tr truly believe it for everyone. And uh, in Dimona, it's, it's a curse. It's like, what? You go to a psychologist? They, they think the psychologist and psychiatrist is the same thing. And um, now, actually, in the last two months, I really put lots of efforts with uh, meeting my friends weekly. Right. Never mind if it's a beer, it's a coffee in my house, whatever it is. 
to have this silence on this side because look, I'm not going to be able to take my bag and move to Peru and to travel for half a year. But I don't want it. I have such an amazing baby here. I mean, my company is, is so amazing. I mean, my team and I love it. I, I'm enjoying it. It's hard. It's really, it's super challenging, but I love doing it. This is why I do it. And, and I always ask myself daily uh, what I did today to uh, work on my mental health. So sometimes I go to a walk or I live really close to the beach. So I just go to the beach for 20 minutes and go back to work uh, from, my, from home. And I have an amazing boyfriend, mm -hmm. Steph, is in Costa Rica now um, traveling. <laughs> he li lives his life, don't worry about him. Um, and he always keeps me balanced. I mean, when he sees that I'm working like 11 p.m., no, 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 he, he closed my, uh, closes my uh, computer. Yeah, it's important to find the people that are helping you and assisting you with balancing right. the company and the, and your personal sanity, which is really important. Yeah. Really, more important. Mm -hmm. When my is 70% off, the company is ooh, going down. Right. Um, you need to have, and I'm really like, I'm a personal judger. I'm like the biggest judge of myself. I wants to be 200% all the time. So once I saw how preserving and developing my mental health really uh, improves me and helps me, not just taking me down. Yeah, so I, I took two hours off today or I didn't, I didn't go to the office today because I worked from a coffee shop or I went to the beach. This is what we also tell our team, work from anywhere. We don't care. We want you to be happy. Right. Wow, for sure. And especially as a founder, you know, where it's not two separate things, very difficult. Obviously, we always talk about the work life harmony, you know, balance doesn't exist, but the work life harmony, we're able to coexist together. Um, but as a founder, a lot of times the ident your identity becomes your startup, right? And even though work is just something that we do, it's not who we are. But work also gives people that in a sense, in order to make a bigger impact beyond their current community, to the global impact and make a difference. And so important to, especially the founder, it comes together. It, your your mental health comes tied in together with your your company. You know, like you said, you know, as you raise more money, it went more down because you know more responsibilities. You have to now you took someone else's money. You have to be, provide a financial return. You have to re actually get customers and pay. So obviously, of course, like that. But the the question that came out when you were speaking was, how do you develop get people to trust you? You know, people coming to work for your company or in general, they could be like. 21 year old my kid is 21 year old 21 year old you know like yeah. like how do how do you develop that trust because no trust is not earned. trust is not right away it's something that has to be earned you know yes you you could be their boss and ceo but still that trust doesn't exist yeah so so it's really important i believe people are not i think people are not giving it that big place but building trust as a mission it's it's a, it's a task and I believe that this is my personality. I mean, I can't act differently. Mm -hmm. And I believe that my life and my childhood, I am, I'm really mature since, since forever. And I'm a CEO since forever. <laughs> and I believe that once people see you, at, when I interview people to my company or I meet investors i'm i'm being myself you can see a 30 and 40 pe uh, year old people that are immature or they're uh, a thief or they're a liar uh, they're liars or whatever i i don't believe that my age tells anything about my personality except i'm a badass so <laughs> <laughs> and i believe that also like both investors and employees are seeing this as an advantage right. that my has a lot of time to figure out things and to figure out how to make V work because I have a lot of time that to, to make V my only big responsibility, you know, like in terms of family, kids and, and whatever, whatever, wedding and stuff. Right. And also in terms of, I have a lot of time to fall and get up and fall and get up and fall and get up. Um, in V with like accept V or, or 
and, and, and everything. And I believe that it's also in my agenda of listening. I believe that a good CEO is not someone that knows everything. Same thing as for like a uh, prime minister or any leader. I, I brought the, the best team I can because they know a lot more than I know. And this is what I wanted to build here. People that can literally teach me everything from zero. Nice. And this is why when I'm here talking to you, I know that everything is rolling because they know the job. They know the job. And when they, we're doing weekly funnels and marketing funnels and sales funnels and customer success funnels and et cetera, et cetera, I learned so much. And at the beginning, I really, every... Um, like every time we ended a, a meeting with the VC or team, or I would like come in with my notebook, writing everything because that was the first time I've ever heard of the, all of those. Now I'm, lead, I'm leading the conversation. And imagine you as uh, whatever, and for example, an, an angel investor meeting so many entrepreneurs every single day. And then my is coming to your meeting and saying, one, two, three, four, five. This is the company. This is RRR. This is my vision. Bottom app strategy. What one, two, three, four marketing and, and, and analytics, competitive analysis, and all of those. And by the end of the conversation, I'm saying, Yeah, and, and I'm 21 years old. It's a wow. They are shocked. They're like, okay. But if if you're gonna make it the elephant in the room, it's gonna be the elephant in the room. And once you're saying no, this is an advantage. I I'm here to learn. I'm here to work really hard. And I have an amazing and experienced team behind me. It does the job. Wow. It really does. And there are always were the people who didn't believe. And that's okay. They are here to teach you what not to listen to. They are here also to, uh, to give you the, you know, the right connections and thoughts and ideas. I'm, I'm choosing to look at the bright side here. Mm -hmm. Wow. So many things you mentioned that you packed into there. You know, first thing, surrounding yourself with teachers, you know, teachers, mentors, so important. Second wow. thing is, you know, being able to utilize, you know, your age as a benefit, you know, not as something that, uh, is, you know, as a young, as a detriment, but as a benefit saying, hey, I'm, this is who I am. This is what I've found. This is where I'm holding. This is what I'm able to accomplish. And I'm 21. Yeah. Imagine what's going to happen if you do invest in me over the next few years, right? And I think that's such an important lesson to all young people out there that are still in high school that have the dream of starting a, car, a startup or people that are in college, university, or people just starting their career right now, you know, graduating, graduating, looking around the world and thinking, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. First of all, surround yourself with good people. Second of all, it's, you can always start. Use age to your benefit. Tap into mentors. Tap into people because people, end of the day, are good. And people want to help other people. Really? Uh, both experienced entrepreneurs and CEOs, they're here to help. They really see you as their like younger vision when they need the help. So really, the ecosystem, not just in Israel, but in the US, Europe, people are here to help. What inspires you? What inspires me? Okay. Well, um, what's your inspiration to make this massive impact in the world, to make this global <laughs> impact? What's the inspiration that gets you, you know, going? Is it, it's so amazing and incredible. Like, thank you. I, it is. I I think that my inspiration is like um, like a snowball that rolls and rolls and rolls. Every time that I see one of our customers completing their first event with V or when I see one of our nonprofits showing or, or being proud of the, the fact they're a part of V. Because one year ago, there were no V. We launched only half a year ago. Mm -hmm. And we have lots of organizations and corporates and people and nonprofits in our platform doing good. This is what they do. They just do good. And it inspires because it makes you want to bring the next one and the next nonprofit and the next big event. And it really goes like this. But by the end of the day, I think it's the same inspiration that I had in day one. When I'm closing my eyes and I see all the people in the world doing good in V and people saying, ah, Ephraim, you wanna 
You wanna let's check what's going on around us. Let's see what's the new social initiative around us, or what like what people need. Maybe there is a nonprofit in need, or let, let's do something good. And you'll answer, let's check out V. This is my long-term vision, and this is what I'm here to do. Wow. So when you're closing your bed at night, when you're going to sleep at night and you're closing your eyes, and you're thinking, you know, how the world is using V, that people are volunteering, people are giving back, you're able to get that peaceful sleep. Sleep with it. I would say peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still managing 20 people though. Um, and raising a, a bigger round now. So not, I'm not saying I'm sleeping well. I think it's like 60%, but um, I sleep happy. Right. Wow. So you're standing on the TED stage. You know, you're talking the global TED stage. You're talking to a group of hundreds of people. You know, and specifically, or even like, you know, even better, you're talking to young, a group of high school students, of young girls, young boys, you know, and they all have that question. Everyone's looking for meaning in their life. Everyone wants to know, you know, what am I going to do with my life? How am I going to make a bigger impact? You know, what do you tell these younger people? What do you tell these young girls that are, or, or, you know, or these young boys? Because you are the inspiration. You know, these days, the, the new inspiration is the Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg. Right, all the young tech CEO billionaires where people think, oh, if I just build a company, it'll sell tomorrow, not realizing it takes 10, 20 years. But you know, you're the inspiration at 21 years old, raised $2.1 million, raising a bigger round, have a team of 20 employees, you know, 20 yeah. teammates, and going to do accomplish incredible things. So you will become you are the next, you're the next generation of that inspiration for them. What do you want to tell them? I'm thinking about the answer as what I needed to hear at the beginning of, of everything. And I believe the answer is believe in yourself. You are capable of so many things that you don't even know. You just have to try. And always people are telling, maximum you're gonna fail. No, maximum you're gonna win. Mm. You need to try. And I believe that when we're gonna take this part of our mind, which is here to protect us, say, are we gonna do it? And I'll say, shh, it's not are we gonna do it, it's how we're gonna do it. And so the how you're building a plan. And when you have a plan, everything is seems possible immediately because you have a plan, you know how to do it. It's not just the if, it's how you have your plan. And I'm not saying this on, to on like only girls or this privileged people and, and children. It's not this. It's to every person that has an idea, not just to a huge startup. Impact doesn't need, need to be a multi-billion dollar company. It can be small. It can be a small business. It can be your private Instagram shop. It can be your next book or everything. It can be really small. Impact as uh, it's in a ratio. It's not just mm. needs to be a big one. You can be your own personal superhero. Um, and you need to think about how I'm gonna do it. When you have the how, you will maximum win. Wow. Wow. My, there's no a word. Good one? <laughs> I am so thankful and <laughs> I'm honored that you allowed me to, you know, hear your story and also trust me to share your story. Um, I've learned so much, so much from you. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, people, the open, open mindedness is specifically related to knowing that you could learn something from somebody, from anyone, you know, everyone has something that the other person doesn't have. And we become guarantors to each other when we try to feel what the other, what I'm, what you have that I don't have, yeah. you want to give it to me and what I have what you don't have, I'm able to give it to you. And mm -hmm. then we're able to benefit a third person too, right? I learned so much from our conversation tonight. You know, leading with empathy, um, you know, pulling through in the hard times. Don't let, you know, for example, it's all about the specific we mentioned now. Don't question, you know, how, don't ask questions. Like, am I the right person? Am I not the right person? The question mm -hmm. should be, how am I actually going to go ahead and accomplish it? But not only that, how am I going to surround myself with incredible teachers 
that are able to support me through difficult times and also be able to help me go and accomplish my goals. Yeah. Every person has the ability to accomplish so much in life, so much. But it's only our own self-imposed limitations that get in the way, right? And from you I learned today, don't let any of that get in the way. The world is our oyster. The world has an unlimited amount of possibilities, right? There's no set amount of possibilities, no set amount of opportunities. It's unlimited. Yeah. Go ahead and accomplish anything that you desire, anything you want to do. My, I know you're going big places. And I know V is going big places. I only pray you don't forget me when you get to those big places. And like, <laughs> but I want to- No, you're going to be our first superhero in New York. No worries. <laughs> I want to thank you. Pleasure. I want to thank you so, so much. This has been an absolute honor and an opportunity. And there's no doubt in my mind that so many people, young and old, are going to benefit from listening to this and listening to your wisdom. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ephraim. Thank you for inviting. You're welcome.